What if the law schools also had to make available their CDO to sit down with the military and help them um, craft, you know, in a, a statement that would be attributable to the military, you know, this is why a career with the military, this is what it would be, this is why it's attractive, and then post it. Would that change, Rumsfeld? So there was actually evidence that those sorts of services were offered that the law schools were pressing that are referenced in the Third Circuit's opinion, but not specifically referenced in this court's cases. I think what that starts to get into is how do you draw the line between are you providing, is it really the same speech that you would provide for someone else, and are you being required to do something that goes beyond that, to express the sort of opinion-related statements that Justice Kagan What if described. they do it for everyone? The Career Development Office will do that for, you know, law firms. This is the job of an associate, and here's why it would be appealing, what you'd be getting out of it. If they do that, then they would have had to do that for the military, or would that make that case more like Hurley? So I guess here's the way I'd answer the question is, is the way that Hurley did. We read Hurley to ask, is the compulsion, is the burden on speech, is it truly incidental to the content-neutral regulation of conduct? And what Hurley started with on pages 572 to 573 is being emphatic in saying this parade is not excluding people because they are gay and lesbian. It is excluding them solely because of the message that they want to send. And so the court said applying the public accommodations law to them is not incidental. It's not serving the content-neutral regulation of conduct because they're not discriminating on the basis of status. Instead, the law in Hurley, the court said, was a equivalent to a law saying that the parade had to include any message that any protected group wanted to offer. That is not an incidental burden on speech. That is a direct burden on speech. And the reason why we view this case as being like fair and not like Hurley is because Colorado is not asking Ms. Smith to say messages or to speak messages that she would not speak for anybody. The only thing that it is saying is you can't discriminate based on status and you can't define your services based on protected status so that you can't say, the thing, the message that I object to that I won't speak for anybody is a message that is tied to the customer's status.